All right, so are you ready to get those creative juices flowing? I am. Because today we're taking on a super cool challenge. Oh, yeah. Redesigning a disc golf course. Nice. From scratch. From scratch, okay. We're headed to Wellington Disc Golf Park. Love that park. In Flower Mound, Texas. Okay. But hold on to your hats. Okay. We're ditching the existing layout and treating the whole park as a blank canvas. So just like yeah. a clean slate. Totally clean slate. Okay. Yeah. So like we've been handed the keys to the park and told, go wild, make the most awesome nine hole course you can. Yes. But you got to work with what's already there. Right. Ponds, trees, even those benches by the dam. So, okay, we're started at the dam. Okay. Picture a gorgeous evening, perfect disc golf weather. Right. But right away, we hit a snag. Oh. We can't just huck discs over the water for our first hole, can we? Nope. Benches and trees are in the way. Garn. Hole one runs alongside the pond. The basket tucks slightly left amidst some oak trees. I see what they did there that sets up a nice, gentle start to the course, right? Exactly. Not too intimidating for us beginners. Exactly. And by placing the hole one basket near those oak trees, okay. they create a natural transition to hole two, okay. which throws from the opposite side of those same oaks. Oh. See how the design is already flowing? Oh, that's clever. Yeah. So hole two weaves around a few trees before a sharp bend to the left. Yep. The source says, a good skip could make this a nice ace run. Oh, yeah. For those not familiar with disc golf, an ace is like a hole in one. You sink your disc in the basket with one throw. With one throw. Just like that. Yeah. Right. And the way this hole curves sets up that possibility. It adds a little excitement right from the start. For sure. So instead of heading towards the original hole nine, mm -hmm. we completely bypass the original hole four. Yeah. And land on hole three. Yes. Which is actually the original hole five, right? That's right. And this is where things get interesting. Okay. Remember those first two holes relatively open and forgiving? Yeah. Well, holes three, four, and five are where the course shifts gears. Okay. Demanding accuracy and finesse. We're talking tight woodsy shots. Okay. So the challenge ramps up. Yeah. Hole four is the original hole six but with some adjustments. Mm -hmm. What kind of tweaks are we talking about? So the designer moved both the tee pad where you throw from uh -huh. and the basket. Okay. By making those adjustments, they've refined the shot, making it trickier and more rewarding to nail. So even small changes can have a big impact on how a hole plays. Absolutely. And then we have hole five, a revamped version of the original hole seven. Yes. The source mentions they shifted the tee pad to avoid a troublesome tree Sounds like that tree saw a lot of action before. I bet it did. Oh, yeah. Removing that obstacle changes the whole feel of the hole. Okay. It becomes Sorry. less about luck and more about skill. Right. Now, remember how we skipped over the original holes eight and nine? Yes. There's a reason for that, and uh, it leads us to one of the coolest features of this redesign. Lay it on me. I'm all ears. A figure eight layout. Okay. Essentially, the course loops back on itself. Hold on, a figure eight. Yeah. So we're essentially crossing paths with ourselves at some point. Exactly. And that's where things get really exciting. Ooh. Hole six, which throws from the original tee pad four toward the original tee pad three. Okay. Becomes this wide open power shot. It's a chance to really let loose after navigating those tight wooded shots on the previous three holes. It's but good. don't get too comfortable because hole seven throws us right back into the technical challenge. It does. It's the original hole two, but played in reverse. Mm -hmm. Imagine a perfectly curved shot weaving through the trees with the potential for an ace run if you've got the skills. Oh, yeah. Very technical shot. You're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> the mix of challenge and beauty. That's, that's what makes disc golf so special. It is. So we've navigated this awesome figure eight. We're back near the dam. And I can't help but notice that tempting fountain pond. Yeah. What's next? Well, that brings us to a crucial design decision. How do you end a course with a bang? I mean, we've got this beautiful pond right there mm. begging to be incorporated into the design. Right. But how do you make it challenging without making it frustrating? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Picture this. You're standing on the edge of the dam, the spray of the fountain cooling the air. Right. And straight ahead, across the pond, is a cluster of trees with the basket nestled right in the middle. Uh-huh. Hole nine, a throw over the fountain pond. Oh, wow. Talk about a dramatic finish. But wouldn't that be a nightmare for anyone who, let's be honest, shanks their shot and sends their disc for a swim? Well, that's where our designer's next move shows real foresight. Okay. They added a bonus hole 10. Ooh, nice. A short and open shot with a gentle curve to the left 
perfectly framed by six tall pine trees. I like it. It's a chance to redeem yourself after a potential water hazard on nine, ending on a high note, with hopefully a satisfying clink as your disc hits the chains. That's a great touch. It adds a fun element of risk and reward without ending the round on a sour note. Right. Until next time, keep those discs flying and your imagination soaring.